Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today you are taking a closer look at possibly the largest snake that ever lived, the Titanoboa. 66 million years ago the world was changed when three quarters of the world's plant and animal life became extinct after a huge asteroid smashed into the earth. Large animals like the dinosaurs were one of the casualties. Over the next few million years other creatures began to fill the ecological niches that were left vacant. The Titanoboa was one of the first reptiles to take advantage of this, arising around 5 million years after this devastating event. Fossils of the Titanoboa have been found in the Cerrojón Formation of Colombia in South America. The Cerrojón Formation represents the earliest known occurrence of neotropical rainforests, that's rainforests of Central and South America. During this time, Titanoboa would have lived and hunted in low-lying rainforests that contained an extensive system of rivers that crisscrossed over the landscape. In this swampy jungle, everything was hotter, wetter and bigger than it is today, and this may have held the key to Titanoboa's huge size. Reptiles are commonly thought to grow in accordance with the available ambient temperature of a climate. This is because higher temperatures that remain fairly constant throughout the year with very little seasonal variation allow ectothermic, that's cold-blooded animals, to maintain an optimum metabolism for longer. This means that bodily functions such as digestion, circulation and respiration, among others, all become far more efficient and a greater amount of energy can be set aside for other areas such as growth. Titanoboa is usually quoted to be between 13 and 15 metres in length. In comparison to modern snakes that are alive today, the largest snake by body weight is the green anaconda, which is credited as attaining a length just over 6.5 metres long. The largest snake by body length, however, is a reticulated python, which is credited as approaching 7 metres long for the largest individuals. The fossil site at Serajon also turned up other huge reptiles like the giant turtle Carbonanimus and some of the largest crocodiles to have ever lived. These animals may well have been on the menu for Titanoboa. Most snakes tend to be generalists when it comes to food, eating whatever they can catch. It's been well documented that some snakes, like anacondas, will eat crocodiles, and so it seems likely that Titanoboa was no exception. Eating a carbonanimus may have been a bit trickier. The huge shell would make swallowing the giant turtle problematic, and digesting the bony shell would take a lot longer. So while juveniles may have occasionally been food, it's likely that the Titanoboa would have hunted easier prey. Analysis of the fossils of Titanoboa reveal it to have been similar to modern boa constrictors, but the environment it lived in would have led it to have a lifestyle more like anacondas. A water dweller comfortable in both swift moving rivers and swamps, it probably used the water to its advantage, remaining submerged and launching lightning fast ambush attacks. Because the bones in the skulls of snakes are not fused together like in other animals, when the snake dies the skull will often break apart, and because the bones are so fragile they rarely fossilise. But with Titanoboa, due to the sheer size of the bones, they actually have a chance to fossilise. Indeed, in 2011 three skulls were found. This gave scientists some interesting new information. Fragments of jawbone suggested that Titanoboa's mouth and a whole head could have been over two feet long. A quadrate, a hinge bone connecting the lower jaw to the skull, enabled the back of the lower jaw to extend behind Titanoboa's brain. Its mouth could open big and open wide. There was at least one inconsistency, however. By looking at the number of holes in the jawbone fragments, the researchers concluded that Titanoboa had more closely packed teeth than modern day boas. This could potentially mean that Titanoboa ate mainly fish. Having more teeth means it's easier to hold onto slippery fish. In the fossil remains at Serajon, there are fossil lungfish that measure up to 3 metres long that could have provided a decent meal for the huge snake. Titanoboa died out around the late Paleocene epoch, and while the exact reasons for this are unknown, a couple of theories have been put forward. The average global temperatures are thought to have been slowly declining around this time. As mentioned earlier, the high temperatures of the Titanoboa's time are thought to have allowed it to attain its huge size. Titanoboa may eventually have not been able to maintain their metabolisms due to the falling temperatures in their ecosystems, something which may have seen them replaced by smaller snakes that could still operate optimally in the lower temperatures. Other giant snakes such as Madstoia and Gigantopophis in other parts of the world are known to have been around until the mid-Eocene period, roughly some 20 million years after the disappearance of Titanoboa. 
The presence of these snakes later in the fossil record proves that giant snakes did not vanish overnight. Yet since the fossil evidence indicates that these snakes were smaller than Titanoboa, then they may have actually support the theory of steadily declining global temperatures driving a shift into the dominance of smaller snake forms. Another factor that may have contributed is the changing habitat, again brought on by a changing climate. Around 60 million years ago, the Sarahon Formation was low-lying coastal plains, covered with lush rainforests that had an extensive system of numerous rivers running across the landscape. However, today, the Sarahon Formation is the largest coal mine in Colombia, and is situated much higher above sea level than it was during the Paleocene. Clearly, the kind of habitat that Titanoboa lived in has now disappeared. Well, that's all I have for you this week. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. And I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.